just never had the energy for that. Well, let's see if you've got it today. I, that's it. It's gone. But we are back. Um, really, a smart man would have investigated which episode we're actually on. I'm going to call this like season four, episode one. We're way past season four, right? Well, I don't know. Like, I feel like the first hundred were just one season. We just did one very oh, okay. long season, and then we've had uh, three significant breaks. And then between. we got so popular, we Game of Thrones it. We gave you like six episodes. Yeah. That's just, a season. Just teasing it. Yep. Yep. But our quality was way better. Oh, I mean, yeah. And, well, we didn't have a writer's strike to deal with. <laughs> you know, Benny up. They'll, they'll tell you. They had all the options in the world. So, how you they doing, did. man? I'm good. I heard you went to a concert last night. Oh, dude, I feel like I'm in the weirdest version of The Matrix. And that, like, I just, just want to lay out this last week as a whole. So, Soul Asylum. Yes. With you. Yep. Right? Good times. Um, Then, last night, went to see Ludo with my kids, with Tommy and the High Pilots. It was announced this week, this... You probably don't know about this band. Uh, they're probably they were a little bit after you in the scene. There's a band called Fourth and Long. I do not know them. So they were a band that my band used to play with a bunch. Okay. They were like, you know, a moderately successful pop punk band. They okay. were out of Sullivan, but you know, they played all the shows in St. Louis. No judgment. Um, they just decided after 20 years to re-record their entire album, Long Nights and Fireworks, which I fucking love okay and like was a band we played with all the time and dropped the first single on spotify um and then tonight we've got halloween havoc which like as as we've talked about my background's really wcw sure you know like i was i was when i was a initially a wrestling fan i was all wcw halloween havoc is in boom right right there for you halloween havoc was the event like i remember the build-up to halloween havoc so much more than it like starcade didn't sure. mean anything to yeah. me but they, that's where war games comes from though too so right yeah. well and it was just like we weren't buying pay-per-views when i was a kid yeah so it was just like i never saw a halloween havoc so the idea of seeing a halloween havoc and it's like friend of the store ethan page check out toy hunt vlog two episodes don't worry about that's it that's right that's right um but we got ethan page going for the title You've got the Core J Julia uh, feud. Yep. You've got Oba and Tony D'Angelo. Like it's going to be a fun show, but really, I'm thinking and more. No telling what main roster people pop up now. NXT's hopping. Right. So. so it's like it feels like it is all my youth just coming back, and I'm living it. And I don't know if it's really sad or if it's really great. It's fantastic. It's like, fantastic. It's a great week. Yeah. I mean, great week. Aside from a. Pending election and late stage capitalist hellscape, <laughs> things are pretty fucking sweet. A little rock and wrestling week, it's pretty good. Speaking of rocking, hey, we put out some music ourselves. Oh, that's right. Shameless plugs. That's right. That's right. Like the pros. Uh, by the time you see this, the Christmas album should be out, but uh, the Altered State All Along album's already out. Um, selling strong. We probably only have um, fifteen copies left. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Look at us. We might have, we might mess around and become a real band. We might have. Well, that's. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't 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 you dare sell us short, right. pal. That's right. It's the Gen X in me. I can't give myself credit. There's no way to do it. So, speaking of the Gen X in you, yeah. I want your review of Soul Asylum and Juliana Hatfield. I thought Juliana Hatfield was really good. Um, I had forgotten how many bangers were on the one album that they have, <laughs> because she also had like a solo album that had like another couple tunes that I remember, but. Um, um, you know, I I know there's two that are on like my normal ro- not normal rotation, but like they're around my '90s rotation. Right. You know what I mean? Um, they're the two that I recognize because of the sure. ones that you play up here. For sure. Yeah. I never went that deep on like she was a little before me, and she yeah. wasn't commercial enough to break through. Agreed. Agreed. You know, it was like there's a lot of stuff from the '90s that you'll play. That, and I mean, like I grew up in the '90s. I was born right. in the '80s, so right. it's not like I wasn't around in the '90s, but like. You were absorbing music. Right. right. The things that you pick up when you're seven years old right. were really the commercial hits. Right. So, like, right. obviously I knew Soul Asylum. For sure. And I ended up going yeah. deep. But, like, Juliana yeah. Hatfield, 
didn't really breach that zeitgeist for to sure. the level that a for sure. seven to ten year old would know her. Yeah, I forgot how. Uh, I'm not gonna say she's a great guitar player, but she's a pretty damn good guitar player for just having you know a three piece. She, she will. She brings a lot of sound. Dude, the, all all three of them were Sounded like good. that bass player yeah. Richard Dreyfus was a fucking for sure. ripper, man. For sure. Um, '90s bass player, man. You're, you stand out. That's what it is, right? Um, and their drummer, uh, who it. looked like the dad from Heavyweights. Oh, see, I was going more John Mulaney, but okay. He's got a little of that. John Mulaney with a bigger. Or not nose. the dad, the uh, who was it? The the cool counselor, the, I know good, who the good guy counselor. Yes. yes. Uh, yes. Paul Feig. Paul Feig. Yep. There we go. Um, <laughs> I just so, yeah. realized that so, my main yeah. reference for Paul Feig <laughs> is the counselor <laughs> from Heavyweights. <laughs> Major successful Hollywood that's, producer, yeah. director, hell and yeah. actor, Paul Feig. That's, that's to like, me, he's heavyweight. That's like the callback. Oh, I love George Clooney in uh, um, um, what was that '80s show with Three all Kings. the girls? Welcome um, back, Connor. Nope, it was a. Uh, oh man, I forget now. You know the, the the not homeless girls, but the the Gen X age is getting to. You. Anyways, yep. It's Facts of Life. It's two Packs of Life. Thank you very much. He was in that. Yes. Um, where was he in Facts of Life? Uh, he was in a, ra- a couple random episodes. He was one of the girls' boyfriends. Way to go, Clooney. And then Roseanne. Joe? Remember, he was a, um, an abuser in Roseanne. He beat up Jackie. Yeah, yeah. What a piece of shit. He was, he was great for like Universal a bad guy, yeah. George Clooney. It's okay, then. Well-documented uh, villain. Objectively bad guy, <laughs> George Clooney. <laughs> totally bad guy. Hot take. Anyways, he's a great dude, I hear. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, Clooney really needs you to defend yeah, him. Yeah, he does. He was on his way down until I gave him that prop there. <laughs> I did like the new movie with him and Brad Pitt. So we whatever. were about to cancel yeah, Clooney. Totally. We have yeah. that kind of power. He's worried. He's worried. So yeah. Juliana Hatfield was fun. Uh huh. Um, I thought Soul Asylum was fun. I'm not going to lie. I didn't – I forgot. I, I knew they had a new album out, but I had forgotten that. I didn't realize – it was one of those nights where you're like, I want to hear deep cuts. Mm-hmm. And you got new tracks, which yeah. I didn't hate, but I don't know them yet. So, and no one's going to Soul band, Asylum right, for you're, a new album. Ag- agreed. And they played a lot of it. Yeah. Um, probably well, at least six songs. That's what I was wondering. Because like I said, I don't go deep on Soul Asylum, right? Sure. Like, obviously, Runaway Train, Misery, sure. I fucking love. Sure. Uh, Somebody to Shove. Yep. Like, and they played They played them. Right. And they played so great they, stuff. They played yes. the three tracks that I really sure. wanted to see. Yep. But the rest of the set list. I wouldn't know if they were deep sure. cuts or new songs, yeah. but judging by the reaction of the crowd, it they seemed like songs. a lot of new songs. Yes, yes. I was like, man, there's a lot of people here that like Soul Asylum more than me for that sure. don't know more songs than me right for now. For sure. <laughs> you know, they played String of Pearls and stuff like that. That's a deep cut. But, um, you know, um, I was kind of hoping for Can't Even Tell. You know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. I mean, that's that's a big tune. They had a video for that back in the day. Um but, you know, is what it is. I still thought it was a fun tune, uh, a fun time. <clears throat> Those guys can make some noise. Um, the guitar player was a killer. That fucking drummer, man. The drummer was a killer. Yeah. He was a showman, too. It was great. Right. Like, I was I was not prepared <laughs> no. for no. how much of a ripper it that drummer was. Makes you be. realize how little talent you have. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, man, that's that's a musician. Like, yeah. fuck. Oh, oh, I mean, he was the drummer for Prince right. and Shaka Khan. Right. And, and obviously he's been doing like, it for a few he's minutes. A, he's right. a pro. Right. But right. he was uh, he, he was my he, – he stole the show from me a little bit. <laughs> he did. Bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> random – I'm not going to call it a hot take. Random take. You know, everybody gets old. Yeah. You know, Dave's looking a little old, lead singer of Soul Asylum. Uh-huh. But you, when I got home, I was watching TV, and I'm watching the new Daryl Dixon show. Looks a He's lot Darryl like Dixon. him. Looks a lot. I was thinking that while and we they were there. Think, they think that man is very attractive, so I'm not going to say he's losing a step. I mean, he's fucking now. He's Daryl I mean, Dixon all of a sudden. He's Daryl, and he's 60. Like, he right. looks like he's 60. Right. People forget. He doesn't like. They had, like, not three like, albums oh, before they got man, big. he looks yeah. like shit. It's like, no, dude, he looks like he a 60-year-old like man. He looks like a 60-year-old rocker. Like, that's right. fine. Right. He looks like he should. Yep. Like, yep. There's no. For sure. There's no shame in that game. For sure. For sure. But speaking of going to shows and 90s grunge. Didn't fucking Pearl Jam fix Ticketmaster for us in the '90s? Uh, like, what's the deal? Dude? I, thought, I was under the impression, yes, dude, like, but apparently not. So I was really lucky. Like I said, I took the kids to see Ludo last night. So um, Ludo Ween, Ludo takes over. Oh, the I'm John. I take my kids mm-hmm. to do things. Look what at me. I'm a family man. Well, you're about to find out how I was able to, <laughs> um, because the world shouldn't didn't want me to. But like Ludo, you know, they were 
a very good local act sure. when I was in the scene, right? And the band's opening for him were, were the same bit. So I love Haludoween. It's a throwback to that time when I was in the scene, those bands that I loved. All bands that I saw at Mississippi Nights and Creepy Crawl for 10 bucks, yep. right? And now, because I uh, refuse to not subject my kids to my bullshit and try to force them to be like me, uh, Clara has fallen in love with Ludo. And they're kind of a perfect band for kids. Like, they sing, sure. ve- like they're rockers, but they seem, they sing very silly things. Sure. Um, so, Clara's all stoked about it. Go online to buy tickets. $35 ticket. Totally fine with that. Right on. Uh, Libby and Noel want to come also. Put them in the cart. $35 ticket is $25 of service fees. Per ticket? Yeah. Yep. I was like, I'm. I, I cannot, in good conscience, spend right. two hundred and twenty-five dollars yep. to take my family to see Ludo. Ludo. You know, fortunately, had some friends with some connections and got and was, was able to get in at a reasonable rate. But good. like, that's insane. That's crazy. Yep. Agreed. And I feel like it's the the bands like the Ludo size ba- the club size bands that are gonna hurt from that because like I had anyone will pay. I I took my mom to see. Um, Billy Joel. St- Sting and Billy Joel for yeah. her birthday. Um, yeah, there was probably $25 of tickets on that – or fees on that ticket. Sure. But it's a $150 ticket. and At Bush a, Stadium. Right, at Bush Stadium right. for a legacy act, right. for a gift for my mom's birthday. Right. That's worth it. Yeah. But for, like, the regular club bands that I want to go see, I can't spend $50 no. – no. To go see no. – insert club band you, you here. Can't, you can't tell me why the processing fee is the same – as the ticket price. Right. That's, That's crazy. Insane. That's insane. And it's like, as yeah. I was going through the process and I was about to buy the tickets, I was like, I had to stop myself. But then I also had to be like, what What happened? Yep. And it's weird because I feel like whatever happened, happened like post-COVID. Because I've always been annoyed with Ticketmaster fees, but they've never been prohibitive. For sure. Me. Like, I feel I like mean. face value to go to a show at the pageant has been $35 for 15 years. Yep. So if the face value hasn't gone up, if I went from spending 40 bucks to get in to now trying to spend 55, like and that that's that feels very recent to me. That's right. That's right. So in this episode of John's Get Off My Lawn, <laughs> it just blows We're me talking away. about Ticketmaster fees. <laughs> I'm I I get it 100 percent I do I I'm really I'm just do. saying your no. generation was supposed to fix that I, I thought your I thought your grunge I, guys did it we, I, d- we did and I need you to be a monolith and speak for the Gen X culture well, and why I'm fucked obviously we did and then you guys dropped the ball oh, God damn once it. again this is why we are where we are we thought you guys had taken care of things yeah and we could go on vacation for a little bit I just needed nope some, God nope fine someone called Janine Garofalo. <laughs> And Ben Stiller, David Cross, and a couple other 90s references. Right. Bob Odenkirk. <laughs> right. We right. had a Mr. Show episode about Ticketmaster fees and everything. We'll be fine again. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but like, that's, like that it, it is. It's, blows it's stupid. me away, man. It's, yeah. I agreed. Like, th- as a – I think about – And it would be different if I had the option to, like, oh, I'll just pick them up at the venue. Right. Can't do it. Right. Can't do it. There's – one, there's no one there to give them to you. <laughs> you know, there's like no one at the venue anymore, and everything has to be digital, and that's yeah, how they justify I, I, their fees. Like, yeah, I can't you. go to the counter at Schnucks like I used right, to. Right. Yep. Or you know what? Half of these fucking concerts, I'm ordering a year ahead of time. Mail them to me. Right. Throw a stamp on that motherfucker yeah, for care. a couple bucks. I'll I'll pay that five dollar fee, no problem, and send them to me. It's just weird, like, so I remember being a kid, and I think you were probably in the same boat. Like my dad was a big sports fan. Um. It was like a big deal for him to take me to sporting events. For sure. Like that was like those are foundational memories, yep. right? And like you could always get into a baseball game. Right. Yeah, you get shitty seats, but like we didn't have money growing up and my dad could take me and my sisters to a ball game. Right. We weren't getting sodas while we were there or anything. Right. But like but you could still get we, in. Could, right. we could totally go and That's make right. those memories. That's right. As a music guy, there's maybe three to five shows a year that like align perfect with being able to take a 10 year old kid to it's like i could take him to see nfg or bowling for soup or ludo and it's like 55 bucks to stand in the back like that's that's crazy agreed 
Agreed. I can't do that. Yep. With Especially my kids. for bands like that that still tour regularly. Right. If like I said, if you're right. like a New Glory, you can see that's right three times through, a year. Right. They right. come through all the time. Right. Absolutely. Which is great, but they can't. Ex- like you said, they can't expect fans right. to pay that every. Ludo's doing time. three nights a row at the pageant. Right. Like. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. Yep. And you know what? I mean, I mean Soul Asylum did Del Mar Hall. I'm not gonna say you know they've Soul Asylum had they weren't a one hit wonder they had right, multiple they were massive. hits. And but not that, only, but not that only was not a full hits. venue. Oh no! So, and I think that's a big reason why. I mean, for sure, it had to be that. But that there was nothing else going hurt. on. There was nothing going on at the pageant that night. It was empty, so it wasn't like people were going to see something else. Right. I think that's part of. The, I mean, it's not the only reason, obviously, but was it like a Monday night? Yeah, so, Monday night. So you know, that's a little bit, but still, um, it's Monday night. It's an older audience. It was a later show too. I was kind of surprising. It was at like eight o'clock show, but uh, anyway, yeah, there yeah, was. I just mean, yeah, yeah, like. It's just, I don't know, man. I'm with you. Get off my lawn. That I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm done with it now. Yeah. I just, and like I said, I'm incredibly, incredibly lucky. I've got really cool friends that were able to help me out, but like, but that's for one show, right? Right. I'm and that's yeah, like that's not a thing. That's not a favor you would call in regularly no. or anything. You know, it's just like, right? It's nuts. Yep. Yep. Fucking Ticketmaster, man, ruining the ruining the little guy. Yep. Again. Yep. What else can we bitch about? <laughs> I haven't seen Joker yet. Can't bitch about that. You know, uh, I'm sure. the, the thing is, it's like I haven't seen Joker yet, and I don't even want to bitch about it. It just like came and went. Yeah, I'm also like, I I know I'm kind of in the minority. I didn't care for the first one. I like the first one. It's just it not, was one of those movies where I'm like, this didn't need to be called Joker or have any reference to it whatsoever. Right. It was but. it was Taxi Driver, and it was fine. For sure. Yeah, but it's just like. I am I am done. Even by then, I am just done with like comic book movies trying to live in the real world. I'm not interested in that. I'm going Isn't I'm, that DC's thing? Exactly. And it's just like I'm going to comics for escapism and fantasy like that that's what's interesting to me about that. There's a million avenues for real world storytelling. Sure. I don't need my comics to sure. live in that world. Like, same thing. I didn't particularly love Matt Reeves, the Batman. Okay. Um, so you're not liking the Joker? The Penguin? The Penguin, pe- yeah. I watched the first episode and thought it was cool. Yeah. I, I haven't watched it anymore. Watched. Like, I just, I like a little element of fantasy in my fantasy. I know what you mean. You yeah. know? Yeah. It's just like, yeah. if I want to watch The Sopranos, the, the Sopranos and The Wire are already perfect. Sure. I don't, I got, I'm not going to argue that. Yeah, I still think Penguin's been a lot of fun, though. And I and, it, and well, as I said, I haven't watched yeah. as much of it as I as I should. I'm it sure is, I'll get around a, to it at some it's point. It's a crime. It's a mafia type show. Obviously, um, there hasn't been any. You know, Penguin doesn't have any toys and yeah. a special car. Well, yes, he has a nice car, but it's a Maserati. It's not like it's a special car. Right. Like I, I, I like that. I know what you mean. When, right. when I went, it was the same thing. Like I, I kind of got out on. Um, Daniel Craig's Bond, yeah. Because when I grew up watching Bond, like my favorite sequence was always the one where they walk through the room with the crazy gadgets sure. and weird sure. spy shit. And yeah. it's like when they start grounding it, it's like that's not that's not fun. That's not what I come here for. It's I like that. all of the things that Austin Powers was able to satire. That's what I go to James Bond for. I know what you mean. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, oh, you just kind of stopped doing that, right? You just you just want everything to be real. Real's fucking boring, kids. Go outside for real. Yep. For real. <laughs> it's a real time, time machine. Time machine. So sad. Um, no, I'm with you. I, I, once again, I, I enjoyed, I'm enjoying the Penguin show. Is it a comic book show? No. You know, I mean, Arrow had way more comic book yeah. things type going on with it than it did... Uh, and that's you know, the thing, mafia like, type real world stuff, but I know what you mean. If you look you at Arrow or even like uh, Christopher Nolan's Batman, mm-hmm. those are like grounded, but they keep the elements of fantasy that you need. Yeah, you know, it's like I don't need, I don't need everything to be Batman sixty six. Sure, you know, like yeah. there's a lot of stuff in the MCU, like the Captain America movies, that are fairly grounded, but like I just need some elements of fantasy like i like i i want to know that i'm 
in a four color world. Sure. I, I like that's that that's what I go to that type of programming for. Right. Like most comic book people, you're massively depressed and need an escape from reality. I understand. Yeah, duh. Yeah, I pay. think I've covered that. That's what, we, that's what we pay for. Right? <laughs> Therapy. That's well documented. That's right. That's right. Uh, people are asking me to shut up about it. That's, that's right. <laughs> Daily. What We uh, get it, John. You're <laughs> sad. God. Um, what else we got? Um, so, while we have Halloween Havoc tonight, we have Crown Jewel next weekend. Yeah. I don't give a shit. Really? I'm going to watch. I, I enjoy wrestling. I'm kind of in the same boat. Nothing's going to happen. Right. It's They're saving everything for Survivor for, Series. Yeah. yeah, you might have a... Someone might pop up randomly or something like that, but it's hard to keep a secret on a 20-hour flight to Saudi Arabia mm-hmm. with certain people you know people who well, sit at the airports and watch there's only a couple airports you can go to where you fly into saudi arabia so they watch who goes and all that kind of shit and right if there's a big surprise they announce it and it's also it's not a major pay-per-view so i don't anticipate except they just gave braun t- the title back motor city machine guns just won uh tag titles i, I think those were your big changes mm-hmm. this will just be i i think everybody the only, keeps the titles and the only thing that comes out of this is the actual start of the Cody Gunther rivalry and feud. Like, yes, yeah, I don't think that it even goes past the, that. You don't match. think so? Nah. Oh, see, I think nah. I think I, you have to build that up because I, I think Gunther is the logical villain to I, Cody. Sure, but I think there's some type. Of, they're on different shows though. For now. Yeah, but there, there'll be some type of shenanigans because the titles aren't on the line. You know what I mean? Right. The whatever Crown Jewel title is on the line. There'll be some type of shenanigans that will set up either a Gunther feud with this guy or a Cody feud with this guy because that person cost them that match. I think that's the only – You're not. You're, there's no way they're giving Cody or Gunther a clean win. See, no, not a chance in hell. You ready for my hot take? Please. I think – You're wrong. Probably. <laughs> Likely. But I do think this would be fun. This is, this is a hot take. This is a long shot hot take. This is not one that I would bet money on. Okay. But this is something that I think would be a cool angle. Okay. Um, Gunther wins clean, right? So he feels like he's got a claim to the belt. At Survivor Series, he loses his belt. Okay. Then starts his feud with Cody. Gunther wins the Rumble. But who's he lose to? If he loses, I don't know if yet. he loses his belt, he loses that credibility. I feel like, maybe, maybe not. If he if he loses it with shenanigans, I think he could lose it with shenanigans <laughs> to any number of people, and then I think he wins the rumble, and you start getting him on Raw weekly, just like squashing people, and then he wins the rumble, and he's the one that takes the belt from Cody at Mania this year. Nah, so that I, was a long shot. Hot I, take. I think Cody holds on to it through through WrestleMania. No way. Yeah. I think Cody's got to drop. Nah. I, they they built him up too much. He hasn't had. Right. He had it for a year. I, I don't think you can And in go that year, he really him. hasn't had a major. I think he has a heel turn and keeps it. They will never. I, I think he's the I think he's the next Cena for the company. His his merch sales are through the fucking roof, dude. For kids, especially sure. like I, I think he's a I think he's a through and through baby face. I think for people like you and me. Watching him turn heel would be awesome. Super fun. I think you can't forget that wrestling's a diverse fan base with a lot of kids, yeah. and he moves a lot of units he as does. a face. He does. I, I, get, think I he, get that. Yeah. I, I think that's the Cena thing. I don't I don't think we see the potential even for a heel turn for another handful of years and after the belt's off him. Nah. They're, I mean, they're building Roman up way too much as a face. He's going to be a big face for a long time. They've been trying to do that forever. Mm-hmm. And they finally got people cheering for Roman. They'll move that into, I think, heel rock. I think, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Roman rock. For sure. So, you know, I don't know who Cody's going to face. Gunther. Eh. Yeah. You, you, then you're, you're changing the entire other show by ch- moving that champion that you just put the title on over there. But it, he loses it at Mania. He's ha- he'll be a year-long champion. You don't need people to hold the belt for longer than Oh, year. I agree. I just think... Like, Roman think holding Cody it will. for as long as he was. Like, obviously, there's legacy there. That's great. But that makes that makes for boring programming. Agreed. 100%. When belts don't change hands. I agree. Yeah. I, I am a, I'm kind of against anyone being champion 
for longer than a year. I, w- I, I, I don't even yeah. like people being champion for a full year. Oh, I would like to see so more. I think Cody's got to drop it. Turnover, but I, I just, I don't think. I think the buildup for Cody was so long. He holds it through a wrestle. He, he wins. He won at WrestleMania. He'll win through a WrestleMania, and he then loses at SummerSlam. Somewhere in there, yeah, I could see that. I, I could see that. Maybe. Yeah. I just, <clears throat> I don't know, man. I think it's time. Eh, we'll see what happens. John Cena wins it from him. We'll see what. Nah. <laughs> Nah. No, no way. Cena doesn't need another belt. No, I agree. Yeah, I mean he'll have his run, and they may fight, but they Randy won't. Orton takes it off him. I could see a Randy Orton small run just because, you know. Well, now now they're working the angle, like I think it's Triple H when he does his whole spiel the other night. It's like I'm trying to protect you. I'm trying right. to, it's like I'm trying to protect you from you. Right. Like, like we're about to get 09 Orton back. Maybe I, I would love it. I would and love I, it. I think he's going to be a fucking menace. I think it'd be great. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it'd be great. I like that they put the uh, title back on Braun. I think that was a mistake, taking it off him so fast. They've and been clean. so weird with him. Like, how he, lo- he lost clean to Sammy. Yeah. And then they made up for it by him taking the belt off Sammy. And then he lost clean to Jay. Yeah. And then he did a pseudo face turn with the weird, like, coming out and shaking his Which hand. Which ended up just being a, a bullshit thing because then he comes out and destroys them the next right. week. Right. Well, yeah, it was obviously right. a bullshit thing because fans hated it. Right. I think, that, I I think, think, think they were trying to make him a face. I think so, And then too, when right. there was fan reaction, they were like, never Chance. mind. Right. Right. People liked him as he was. Like, he was right. that middle. Some people boo him. Some people cheer him. But people reacted. That's all you want. Well, he's just, he is a fucking badass. Absolutely. Man. Like, you yep. need him to dominate. Yep. Yep. Building them up to be able to do that, to have him lose to Sammy and Jay clean. Yep. This early in his career was like, what what are you doing with this kid? Agreed. Agreed. Uh so I think he's got a hold for a minute. I would think so. Um But I don't even, I don't even know what's going on at Crown Jewel to be honest. All right, uh yeah, Crown Jewel. And I think the only thing that's that could be interesting is like I said, you get the actual either jumping off point or and your and your thoughts killing of the Cody Gunther feud I I think there is a possibility of Jaden Bianca dropping the belts again in a fatal four way because I think you've got to start to sow some seeds of discontent because they both just need to be singles it's not it doesn't work it's not they're not they, neither one of them are working I feel like it's just I don't know. Well, it's like what it, kills me is Bianca is the EST, right? Bo- like sure. she, she's, I think she's got to be a singles both person, of them, and she's carried Jade long enough that I think yeah. Jade is ready to start taking singles. She needs matches. to figure out what she is. Um, both of them need help on the mic, and all they do is give them stuff to talk about. And yeah, I, and, and that's like no, that's just put them in the ring and let them throw people around and be badasses like they are, and they're just not. They're giving them more out of ring time than they are in ring time and i think that's a that's a bad thing for them it just yeah. it, it shows their weaknesses i don't give two shits what they want to talk about i want to see them do some badass shit in the ring yeah well that's i i i think there's a world in which they they're soon because their spiel is just the same thing every time you know what i mean like we're the baddest we're this okay cool but now we'll go do something i just yeah i believe it yeah y- you look the part i yes yeah. but I want to see you and like Piper Nevin and you know Nia Jax. I want to see that shit happen. I want to see real. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know. It's it is what it is, but uh, I think they're doing them a disservice just giving them hosting duties at events. Well, and that was like the thing. That. I think it was pretty clear they put them together because while Jade's like super strong and imposing, uh, her her in ring skills are still a work in progress. Yeah, she's very green. So I think they. You know, they put her with one of the best right. to be like, all right, cool. It makes sense to be in a tag team, yes. And not, but now I think, I think Jade's performed enough that it's like, okay, you start putting sure. her in in singles yeah. stuff. Yeah. And Bianca just is a single superstar. Like, yeah, she, she was already, uh, yeah, she was already an established champion. She she was a great wrestler. Yeah. So it's um, like I'm I'm ready. She took a step back with that tag team for sure. Yeah, and like she did it to help put Jade over, which is great. Like yep. I'm, I love that that's what they did and it worked sure i just think it's run its course i think i'm ready to see both of them in singles competition so i think doing a fatal four-way at crown jewel they can lose i think they can lose and you can start to get like some fracturing between them to where you build up to a jade bianca fight at mania yep like that would be a fucking banger of a match i'm in 
Oh, man. So I think that's the only thing that's the Fair, only yeah, thing of, yeah. with any like story consequence that could come out of. I can see that crown jewel. I can see that. Otherwise, I think it's just going to be more of the same. Yeah. And it's a Saturday afternoon, so it'll be an yeah. easy thing to have on at the store and just sure bomb around sure. to get ready for war games. Yep. Yep. Hell yeah. Um, I don't know. Wrap it up quick. Since we are a comic book store, Absolute Batman's kicking ass. Absolute mm. Wonder Woman came out was really good. Uh, that whole Absolute Universe, um, you know, pre-sales are doing really well, so I'm excited for that. So uh, Scott Snyder is kind of overseeing that. Uh, can't go wrong with some Scott Snyder and some Batman. He, yeah. se- he seems to know what he's doing there. That feel that's like the first DC book in a long time that is very hard to keep on the shelves. Yep, absolutely, so absolutely. If if you loved like any of Snyder's New Fifty Two run, which was incredible, or the heavy metal stuff that Snyder did, like you want to get in on the Absolute Universe. Yep, and you want to do that sooner rather than later because it is very hard to find these days. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, abs- absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, as of recording, um, second printing is out maybe next week. Yeah, it, it, uh, um, this Wednesday, the 30th. Yeah, I believe October it's out 30th. this week. So, uh, and they've already got a third printing Yep, uh, dropping mid-November. Yep. It's like that That book is moving. Big time. Big and it time. should. It's really good. Absolutely. It is, Absolutely. It's the most I've enjoyed a Batman story. Outside of like the Black Label stuff, they've done some really cool. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You probably can't see it, but Absolute Superman is coming out, too. That looks really good. They announced Absolute Flash, Absolute Green Lantern, and Absolute Martian Manhunter. Um, okay. So we shall see. Yeah. I'm here for it. Yeah. I'm here for it. Those aren't out until next year, but uh, apparently they're going to do it. Good for them. Uh, once again, we got music out. Go to, the, go to the website, buy some shit. Go to the iTunes, the Spotify, download some shit. Yep. That's all I got. What else you got? Nothing much. We're going to have a super fun Halloween this week. Super fun. And uh, we'll catch up with you well rested next week after uh, a nice little fall back. It's daylight savings time. I did see. see what you did there. I'm an old yeah. man. Yeah. I yep. pay attention to time. Jeez. Ah, ah, ah. We're done. See you later. <laughs>